Hey team, welcome to this 30 day video challenge where I'm gonna release 30 games in 30 days. These games are games that you can play with your team at any time. Some of them include skills, some of them include conditioning, and honestly, some of them are just tag games that you can play with your team. So make sure you tune in every single day this month where I'm gonna release a new video with a brand new game. And before we get started, I'm Coach Hart, this is Building Better Baseball, and this is the best place for baseball education. So let's get into this 30-day video challenge. I'm super excited to bring you these games. Let's get started. All right, welcome to day three of this 30-day video challenge. Day three's game is called Keepers of the Castle, and this is how it's gonna work. Ages, I would say, uh, eight years old and above because this game is a little complicated and I don't know if the younger grades like four years old five years old six I don't know if they would fully understand it I'm gonna leave it up to you because you know your team best if you think that they can understand it and comprehend this game then that would be okay um, but I would suggest maybe eight years old and above because I don't know if the younger grades would be able to do this uh, the equipment um, there is a bunch of equipment that you're gonna put on the pitcher's mound in the center and it's it's just going to be a whole bunch of random stuff. I would say smaller stuff like baseballs, wiffle balls, uh, hats, uh, literally anything, balls of tape, literally anything small that's easy to carry. Um, that would be the best thing. So whatever you have available for you, something small and something easy to carry, that would be the best thing for the equipment and get as much as you can, as much as you can. You can get a bucket of balls. You can get a whole thing of wiffle balls. You can get, try and get as many as you can. Try to fill up this whole pitcher's mound. And where you're going to play, you're going to play on the infield, right? So the pitcher's mound is going to be the castle. And all of the teams, there's four teams, and they're going to be at each of the bases, all right? So there's going to be four teams, one at each base, and the castle is going to be on the pitcher's mound, all right? How you play. So how this game works is, first of all, if you have any cones or some way to designate a safe zone, this is going to be the safe zone around the pitcher's mound, all right? This is how it's gonna work. So right here, and hopefully there's enough room. Um, I know that some fields are really super small and the bases are super close to the pitcher's mound. Um, if you need to move this to the outfield and just kind of make four different locations for the teams and have the castle in the center, if that's the way you need to make it bigger, then by all means, you can do that. The bases and the field are not essential to play this game. You can move this game to the outfield if your field is too small. But this is how you play. There is a safe zone around the pitcher's mound and that is the castle, right? So if you have cones, if you have uh, line markers or anything like that to mark the safe zone, that's where this is gonna be. There's a whole bunch of equipment in the safe zone, all right? It's just scattered around, kind of just like a whole big bucket of equipment, right? So it doesn't have to actually be in a bucket. It should be easily accessible and be able to be grabbed easily by your team. Um, but all the equipment's in here, right? You are going to have two or three taggers. I usually do three taggers because I do one less tag tagger than there are teams. So if there are four teams, one at each base, you would have three taggers. So basically if one tagger is covering one team, then there's one team that's open. All right. So each team is at the bases. So right here, 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 and you're going to have three taggers. So let's say that there's one tagger here, one tagger here, and one tagger here. All right. The taggers stay the same the entire game, and it is a lot of running. It is a tag game, and it's a lot of running, so if you ever need to change taggers because they're getting too tired, then that's completely fine, all right? Um, but the three taggers are going to stay the taggers for the whole game as long as they don't get tired. The purpose of the game is for each team to run to the castle and try and collect a piece of equipment and then they're going to bring it back for their team and collect it for their team, all right? So let's say that there's like a little pile here, there's a little pile here, there's a pile here behind this team and a pile here behind this team, all right? Each player, it's like a relay race, right? So each player runs to the center, to the castle, they grab a piece of equipment, only one piece of equipment, and they go back to their team and they collect it for the team and then the next person goes. The tagger's job is to try and tag anybody who who is in this vicinity, okay? So let's say this tagger's here. This guy is running here to try and get here. This tagger tags them there, all right? 
Now, two things. You have two times that you can get tagged. If you get tagged before you get to the castle, then all you have to do is go back to your team and then the next person goes, you don't get a piece of equipment. If you get tagged before you get to the castle, all right? The taggers are protecting the castle. They are the keepers of the castle, like the title, right? Now, let's say, go over here for this example. Let's say that this person goes all the way to the castle here, right? So they made it safely in to the castle. Now the taggers are not allowed to be inside the safe zone or inside the castle where the equipment is. So if this tagger gets here late and this person gets into the castle, the tagger cannot be inside the castle. They have to wait for the person to exit. All right. Now the second time that you can get tagged is on your way back with your piece of equipment. So let's say that this tagger was a little late getting there and then this person collects the piece of equipment and then they start running all all the way back for their team like that but then this tagger runs all the way here and they tag that person before they get back to their team then what you do is that person who just got tagged they have to return the piece of equipment so you return the piece of equipment back to the castle and then you go back to your team and then the next person goes so your goal as a team is trying to collect as many pieces of equipment as you can one person goes at a time like a relay race the next person cannot go until the person in front of them gets back to the team so let's do an example here if this person here is gets tagged as soon as they get tagged let's say this person is behind them they cannot go to the castle until this person here goes back to the back of the line right you can't as soon as they get tagged this person wouldn't be able to go you can't have two people away from your home base at a time you can only have one person away from your home base at a time so that's how the game is played it's like a relay race you're trying to get into the castle steal a piece of equipment get back to your team collect it for your team if you do it successfully then you have a piece of equipment and the next person goes if you get tagged on the way to the castle you just go back and you don't get a piece of equipment if you get to the castle get a piece of equipment and then on your way back before you get to your team you get tagged then you return your piece of equipment and the next person goes all right remember only one person is allowed to leave their home base at a time and a couple other rules you are not allowed to throw the ball or any piece of equipment so let's do this example down here okay so let's say this person gets all the way into the castle they collect a piece of equipment and then all of a sudden they're on their way back here and then this tagger comes here and they're about to tag them this person here cannot throw the ball to their teammate here. They cannot throw the ball. That would be cheating, okay? You can't throw the ball. You have to physically carry or physically run the piece of equipment that you have. You have to run it to your team. You cannot throw it to your teammate if you're about to get tagged. And I don't know if I said this before, but the taggers are not allowed inside the safe zone. And the safe zone, the people can stay inside the safe zone as long as they can. If you need a little break, if you're trying to strategize where to run because there's two taggers in front of you, then you can wait inside the safe zone and nothing will happen. You can't get tagged inside the safe zone. You can only get tagged to the castle and from the castle. And as I said, the taggers are going to be running a lot. It is a lot of running for the taggers because they are just constantly running back and forth trying to tag different people. If they ended up getting tired and you need to change different taggers, I would just, let's say that this tagger right here gets tired, I would put them on the closest team and then take someone from this team and make them a tagger. So just replace the tagger with someone else on another team. So just switch them, right? That's how you change the taggers. So I hope you enjoyed day three, the keepers of the castle. This is a really fun game that you can play with your team. It's very different. It involves a lot of running. It involves a lot of teamwork, a lot of relay racing. And honestly, it just makes the practice that much more fun. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for day four. So I hope you enjoyed today's game and I hope I explained it in a way that you understand and that you can explain it to your team so you can incorporate it into your practices. This is just another game that you can add to your practice plans to have some fun during your practices with your youth baseball team. Before you go, don't forget to grab your free two hour practice plan. I made it just for you to help you out in your practice plans. And in the description below, you'll also see a free baseball equipment sizing guide. There's how to get more playing time. There's how to do batting practice. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I made for you for free. Be sure to grab it before you go. It's all down in the description. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember, this is Building Better Baseball. I'm Coach Hart, and I'll see you next time.